but there are some individuals who survive in conditions that most of us, well, we couldn't even endure. Our next guest is one of them. Tanya Ryder spent eight days alone, trapped in her car, didn't have any food, no water. She not only survived, she has written a beautiful new book about her experience. It's called Missing Without a Trace, which was published this week. We're going to speak to Tanya in just a moment. Her husband is here at her side. But first, the story of how she disappeared and how she was found. It was Thursday, September 20th, 2007. Tanya Ryder was leaving her overnight job at this store and then just seemed to vanish. Her husband, Tom, was terrified. I don't know, and that's what's killing me, but I think even worse is if something did, didn't happen that was bad, knowing would be even worse. Tanya worked overnights and Tom worked during the day, so he didn't realize his wife was really missing for two days. When he called 911, he was shocked at the resistance he encountered. I think that someone has done something to her. It's just that it doesn't meet the criteria for us taking a report. So at this time, we just need to continue checking the jails and the hospitals in the vicinity. What you're telling me is unless she turns up dead, you're not going to care. We don't go actively searching for missing people, sir. We don't go out looking for people that are missing. It wasn't until a day later that officers took a report, and days after that until police finally checked her cell phone and traced a signal to this tower, searched the area, and made a shocking discovery. Uh, we found the vehicle. We got movement. We got movement. Tanya's wrecked car was found in this ravine. She had been here eight days, no food, no water, and yet still alive. This is that missing female, Tanya Ryder, that was on the news. We found her vehicle, and she's still moving inside of it. Wow. She was airlifted to the hospital with kidney damage, severe dehydration, and broken bones. The memories of her ordeal, just fleeting, painful images. I remember flashes, hearing cars, tugging at my seatbelt and, and trying to get it off. The past three years have been a long, difficult journey of recovery. Tanya and Tom Ryder take steps together every day in that journey of recovery, and we're, we're happy to have both of them here with us this morning. Good morning to you both. Tanya, I couldn't help but watch you as you were watching that piece, and it seemed like you couldn't watch some of it. What goes through your mind when you, when you see the story, your story told like that? I think that it's been really hard to, to understand the recovery process, especially if you don't remember something. But what I have learned that's most important is you need to face it. I've tried to bury it, but it's not the way to handle things. You need to take pride in what you've gone through and become stronger from it. Well, hon, you have a lot to be proud of. The, the fact that you were able to endure those eight days without any food, without any water, um, and, and you said you really, you just flashes you remember? What, what do you recall? Um, I have bits and pieces, but I, I remember tugging at my seatbelt. Um, I remember hearing my cell phone ring and trying to reach it and not being able to reach it. Um, I remember hearing cars go by and, and um, banging on my window for someone to hear me. I can imagine no, really no concept of time. You had no idea how long you had been there? Absolutely not, no. And that whole time, your husband is frantically searching for you, doing everything you could, Tom. Tell us again the first time that you contacted police. I kind of felt like uh, they were taking it not very seriously. Um, in fact, their quote was, uh, she's an adult. She can go where she wants, and she doesn't have to tell you a thing. Um, and I didn't want to accept that answer, so I pressed and pressed, and finally was able to get him to take a report and then I made it mm -hmm. so loud that they couldn't ignore the case. You were not going to go away. Uh, the, the police claim that one thing that happened is there was a debit card, a, a bank account that mm -hmm. looked like there was activity and mm -hmm. so they thought that you had just run off but then they discovered that it I was put you. put gas in my truck. And that was how they saw the activity but they thought it was yeah, I don't understand how they come to that conclusion when I told them in the 911 tapes and every interview, all she has is her Nordstrom visa. Mm -hmm. Why are you monitoring our USAA checking account? But they said that that's, once they got that cleared up, they were able to... Once they got that cleared up, it still took them another two days to actually want to get off and go look for her. Um, but the most important thing is that 
she's here. Yeah. yeah. And how is your recovery going right now, Tanya? I think I've realized that you, you can't always control what life throws at you, but you can control how you deal with it. Mm -hmm. And that God can make good out of evil. And, and how have you gone about in the recovery process? What kind of assistance have you been, been given to, to help you with this? I think the book has helped me surface feelings that I've buried. I tried to bury it and tried to pretend like it didn't exist. But we need to rejoice in life and rejoice in our, our trials and, and triumphs and become stronger from them. And Tom, for you? Um, for me, just watching her has been kind of like an inspiration to me. I mean, she came from death's door to be sitting here by you. Yeah, and it is a, it's a real treat and a blessing to me too and for you to share your story that you feel is so important that people can, can get something out of it. So continue to, but you're healed as far as the bones and everything, you're physically, everything's okay? Oh, I still have issues. No. But you're still working on that. Yes, moving uh, forward. Moving forward. That is the that is your that's your bottom line. It is. It's the only way to move. Yes, ma'am. Tanya, Tom, thank you very, very much for sharing your story with us. We really do appreciate that. And you can read an excerpt of Missing Without a Trace at abcnews.com slash GMA.